Chapter 3. Prophesying Enlightenment. Using the ability to receive visualizations and deliver them to the church, shows the use of expressions. The advice, gifts, or recommendations through his message reveal a purpose. Standing steadfast for God's message requires both biblical and sixth sense elements, to convey what he has planned. Predictions can come from apostles, evangelists, preachers, psychics, primary and secondary prophesiers even teachers. Believers often use the power of visualization with determination, before prophesying they put the full suit of armor on and only go by the word of God. People must be able to understand the message you are trying to convey. Compared to newcomers, if demon dwellings are an issue you can't tell if the person is giving an accurate and fair prediction. The ability to prophesy is a genuine and extraordinary gift, it isn't for people who are incapable of adhering to their calling. For example, when a person has an eternal evil soul, they cannot adhere to their calling being for an agenda or propaganda. Not all persons who suffer from demon dwellings possess an eternal evil soul, but those types often underestimate the power of prophesying. Forming an agenda against a person, the prophecy is meant for, can become a major issue. This happens when the prophesier becomes obsessed with a certain person. Or when the prophesier forms vengeance against a person that has done them wrong. The prophesier will then manipulate or undermine positive things about the person, to a point of forming a need for the prophecy they will experience. This can lead to the person being demonized or even dehumanized by the prophesier. Which can lead to a loss of profits or an investigation into financial matters. God needs human vessels to deliver the prophetic miracle or word to people needing them, it edifies the church and glorifies God. Jesus' anointing at the altar is powerful, the words of wisdom flow for healing nations. Predictions weren't intended to be used for deliberate fabrication because deception ruined lives, they were intended to help in some miraculous way. Those are the reasons why it takes a great quality of character to become a prophesier. Jesus was meek and lowly in heart, this means an angel or godly nature, humble, patient, and untamed of the spirit. Matthew 11 colon 28 30, before becoming a prophesier work to achieve those genuine traits, and don't get demonic spirit intervening twisted with prophesying God's message. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. 1 Corinthians 14 33, prophesying requires a lot of learning. Don't join a prophecy school. If it is just a desire. If you can't afford it. If you don't have time to attend. If you aren't serious about growing your gift. If you want to lead or minister to people you need to have a few things in place, to be effective. Three things. A calling from God on your life. The gifting to empower your calling. The time to be able to do it. If you are a person who is set aside for God's ministry, keep it 100. Be real with yourself and be real with others. Sure, there are steps to take. Join a prophetic ministry look for desire and vision to know you can prophesy. After that read Acts 16 to find the true meaning of the prophetic application, interpretation, and revelation to get an example of a real prediction. Seek God for the application and interpretation of a revelation, and then study immensely to show approval. Meditate on his word to be an accurate and genuine prophesier on any given basis. When you prophesy, it won't be about you, it will be about deliverance through the message with grace and mercy. God allows you space to repent and turn from the evil ways, so put aside all dirty deeds, envy, malice, and strife. You won't have time for it once you become about God's business. To avoid investigations or loss of profits plan sessions ahead of time, don't give predictions on the spot especially if you already know the person. This will give you more time to prepare for sessions. Afterward, give God glory for all experiences, gifts given, visualizations, and works performed. People who aren't thankful often remain bitter, so give thanks. God never stated in scripture he would withdraw the gifts of prophesying, but predictions of when Jesus will come back can create problems. Prophesiers can predict about building a new foundation, that is surrounded by biblical and spiritual responsibilities, and this is just an example. As long as you exclude predicting when Jesus ought to come back, there is space for other predictions. Paul wrote, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Every man is also given by the same Spirit, faith, the gifts of healing, the interpretation of tongues, the word of knowledge, the working of miracles, discerning of spirits, divers kinds of tongues, and the word of wisdom. 1 Corinthians 12 4 to 11. Does the Bible say not to watch for signs and wonders when Jesus will return? What it does say, watch, therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Matthew 25 colon 13, this was said before his resurrection. What are God's signs and wonders? There will be earthquakes, floods, lightning and thunder, famine and pestilences, only fear the sights and signs from heaven. Usually lightning and thunder come from the southwest, earthquakes are the results of the earth's movement, 
and flooding comes from rain or thunderstorms.